everybody, it's Karen here from tuppenscolor.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this is the card that I've been making today. It is, of course, it's a Christmas card. If you open up inside, it says Season's Greetings. But I wonder if you can guess how I made these cute little pine cones. If you stay with me, I will show you. I'm using one of the seasonal decorative masks that are in the autumn winter catalogue and they're very good value for money because in the pack you get four so you get this one which is the one I'm using today you get that one you get that one and you get that one so very very useful for creating your own background I've taped this one uh, along one edge with a piece of low tack tape to a piece of crumb cake card and I think the crumb cake is six by six. I have sponge and I have whisper white and I am just going to load up my sponge with a, a good dollop of whisper white and I'm just going to dab through my mask. I'm just going to keep working at it. Okay and because I've created that hinge I can lift up every now and again and see how that's going and if I like it and I can just put the mask down exactly where it was so it's going to take me a few minutes to do this so I will be back shortly I've sponged all over the mask and if I flip that back to show you as you can see I now have a lot of white blobby bits on my card. I just want to point out that uh, in the bottom here uh, I've got some where the ink has kind of seeped underneath the mask and I haven't got a clear edge. I'm fine with that for this particular piece of card. Um, that's sort of what I was looking for but the reason why it did that I think was because when I was doing these bits I was pressing down and I was really squishing some ink in there. So uh, if you don't want that effect use a light touch. Now I'm going to take this away and give it a wash and let the card dry and then I can use it in my project. I have a piece of Whisper White card which is a bit bigger than I want my, my finished image to be and I'm going to mask off uh, one edge of it and to do that I've got a piece of ordinary common or garden copy paper and I'm just going to cut here some hills. And there's no science to this, it's just, you know, however I'm feeling. And I'm just going to arrange that where I think I want it to be. And I think I kind of like it there. So I'm just going to tape this down. It doesn't move around and again I'm taping down the edge of the card because all of that is in all probability going to be cut away and I think I like that right so I've got sponge rollers these come in a pack of two and you get two extra sponges with them and I'm going to begin with uh, what have I got here soft sky so I'm going to ink up the roller with the soft sky and it looks as if nothing is happening okay but I'm just going to come in with my roller and it's very very faint but it is laying a layer of colour on the background of my card and I'm, yeah, I don't think you can see it terribly well but it is there, there well, that's a bit better so I'm starting at the top and I'm working my way down and as I get down to the curve of where the hills are I want it to be fainter and this is a much cleaner way of getting a sponged background than using the stamping sponges which I love you know absolutely love them bringing in more colour from the top okay and I 
think that's enough soft sky and I've also got some mint macaron so I've got my other sponge now these wash like a dream they really do um, they really do kind of give up the color really easily so again just very and I'm sort of just flicking this across And I'm keeping the mint macaron towards the top of my card. And I'm going to go back with the soft sky. And just go over the top of that again just to blend it all together. Okay. So when I take away my mask you should be able to see that you've got some snowy hills just about there I'm going to be using some stamps from this stamp set lovely as a tree which is an old favorite with stamping up and I'm going to bring back first I'm going to bring back my bit of um, a bit of paper that I use to to make my mountains with and I'm just going to put that um, just a little bit over where I stamped before and I've got the uh, the tree scene if you like and soft sky ink and I can ink that up well and I'm going to stamp this where shall I stamp it along about there I think and press down and cut one, two, three, four, five. And that will give me a tree scene off in the distance on the horizon. So, and from the same set, I've mounted the big fir tree on my clear block. And I was going to do that in basic black, but then I had another thought. And I thought I would use early espresso instead because it is. It's a, a nice dark colour but it's not quite as harsh as basic black right now. Let's line this up towards the front of my paper and press down and count one, two, three, four, five and pull away. This is the crumb cake card which I sponged earlier on and I've cut it down to three and three quarters by five and a half and I've got the largest oval out of the uh, layering ovals templates and I'm going to take this over to the big shot and I'm going to cut an aperture right out of the middle of that and I'll be right back. And I'm back. So there is the oval that I've cut into the centre of my card um, and when I say centre, I centred it as well as I could between these two edges, but it's nearer to this edge, which is going to be the top, than it is here. Um, and this is the side of the card where the larger snowballs, snowflakes, whatever they, you want to call them, are. So that is visually, um, the weight is all at the bottom of, of the card. I'm hoping that makes sense. Okay, let's bring back my sponged and stamped piece, because now I'm going to see where I want this to sit on in my oven. I want to get all of the tree in there and I want it reasonably well centered and I think that's pretty much where I like it. So I've got my pencil and I'm just going to mark the edges that I want to cut. for one moment and let me bring in my stamp and trimmer get it the right way up so you can see what's going on right now I'm going to line up that pencil line with the groove that I is in the uh, in the plate here for the the uh, the blade to run along and I'm just going to go a little bit past it because it doesn't matter if I cut this a little bit smaller than my front card but it will matter if I don't cut it too much. Well, it won't really matter. 
I just have to do it again that's all okay so same thing here I'm moving up to my edge but just a little bit along it channel I mean not edge okay so I'm cutting off I don't know maybe it's about what an eighth of an inch within the line and I'm just going to trim off the top edge here and just a little bit off the bottom there So that now is going to fit nicely inside the frame with no bits sticking over. I'm going to make a teeny tiny pine cone and I have cut this shape from the Paisley's dies. Now if you haven't got this you can just go ahead and cut a circle and cut it into a spiral and that was what I was going to do and then I saw that die and I thought hmm give it a try and I think it worked quite well there's the finish there is the finished teeny tiny pine cone so this is how I made it so I have my shape this is cut in crumb cake and because it's uh, it's quite a stiff card it's not too heavy but it's quite stiff I am going to tease the fibers first I'm going to break the fibers and I'm just going to run my bone folder along the back of it and that just makes it a little bit more flexible if you were using paper you probably wouldn't need to do this but this is just to help it to to curve a little bit so and I'm going to do one more thing before I get started and that is with my snips I'm going to chop into the center there and just chop out a little a little teeny tiny hole and that is going to be where my cocktail stick whoops goes through and I've just dropped the cocktail stick on the floor wonderful <laughs> excuse me while I go and get another one and I'm back sorry about that okay so I've curled I've got that pre-curled I have my glue gun which has been warming up and is now of glue and I'm just going to put a little spot on the pointy end of my cocktail stick and I'm going to take the free end of my piece of crumb cake and keeping my fingers well away from it just for a moment because it's still warm and I'm just going to wind that up just as though you know those rolled paper roses that we all make just like doing that but if I was making a rose I would make sure they were all in line at the bottom. In this case I'm just letting them come down the cocktail stick and just bending them, twisting them. Right now I've let that bounce back a little and I'm just going to put and again keeping my fingers well out of the way. How do you think I know that? I'm just going to bring that over and finish that off and with hot glue if you get any stringy bits if you wait until it's all cooled down and it's all nice and set just waft over it with a hairdryer and that will blow away all of those uh, those unwanted strings so if I was making another one of these I would turn that over and I would work from the other end but as it is I just need that so I'm just going to bring in my chunky scissors I'm not using my best paper snips on this believe you me and I'm just snipping that off and that is my little mini pine cone. I have crumb cake ink and a finger dauber and I'm going to do that again and three, three. I have crumb cake ink and my finger dauber and I'm just going to lightly sponge just around the inside of the oval here. I'm 
managed to keep myself a little bit cleaner with the finger daubers than I do with the uh, with the stamp and sponges, which is a good thing. Not a bad thing at all. all right. So yeah. So while I'm in the spongy neighbourhood, I have a whisper white finger dauber here, and I'm just going to catch the edges of those pine cones that I made so they look nice and snowy and I've also got some um, pieces of mint macaron which I cut out with the the, the pretty pines and I cut them for a, a different project and these were bits that I had left over but they went into my scraps box and you know what waste not want not so I'm only doing the very ends because these pieces are really much much bigger than I need so I'm just touching the ends of oh, stencil beautifully on my on my silicone mat there okay and this is just uh, there's not much whisper white ink on here um, but I don't want a great deal I'm just checking that I've that I've sponged all of my pine cones because I want them to look nice and snowy yeah right so oops I think that's uh, I think that's me sponging done for today this is the mint macaron sheer linen ribbon and I've cut a length that is long enough to go around the front of the card and uh, to lap over the back and I've got another piece which I am going to tie around the first piece and the idea is is that it look it's meant to look like you've got two pieces of ribbon that are tied together with a knot at the front of the card but actually you have one piece of ribbon with another piece of ribbon tied around it okay and I'm just fiddling with that to make sure that I've got my ends both ends on the same side of the uh, of the other piece of ribbon I have no idea what I'm saying <laughs> anything could happen in the next half hour there we go so that that looks as though it, that piece and that piece are knotted together but they're not ha ha Okay, so I'm going to turn this over and then I'll use my tear and tape. I'm just going to put that over the back there and stick that down. Oops, got a bit too much there. And same thing for this piece. I'm just going to straighten it up. Move it over the back, piece of tear and tape, and there you are. So while we've been doing this, my glue gun has been warming up. So I'm going to start with my three baby pine cones, and I want them to come in around here somewhere. I'm going to put a nice dollop of hot glue onto the back of the card right there. Bring that round from the front and see how that is looking. That looks good. Now you could use something like a silicone glue for this. I think I want that one to fit in between them. So put a bit bit of glue over the top there. A silicon glue, a glue gel, something like that, that would work well for you. Oops, that facing that sort of way. So how do they look? Now while the glue is still warm you have got a little bit of a um, little bit of thinking time with it. Try not to stick it to your fingers because that is not good and it kind of hurts. And again, if you've got strings, just pull them away. Okay. Right, so I've trimmed down my pieces of, um, of my, my mint macaron pine swathes. And the glue is still warm at the back, so I can tuck these in pretty much where I want them. Just 
just arranging the shapes and I'm just going to pull that through to the front so that it overlaps the edge. Nope, it's a bit too late, the glue has uh, glue's gone off, so that's all right. Let's just put a little more on. There you go, a little bit extra. Not at all. And again, I'm bringing that through so that it overlaps the front. I'm clearing away those strings. <laughs> and I've got the bases of those showing a little bit, so... Uh, what have I got in here? I have a little bit of a little bit of an off cut there, and I think I will because this is going onto the front of the card. I think I'll just use a little bit of my uh, of my my tombow just to, to cover that off. Okay. I don't want to mess around with the hot glue, and that will dry clear. And I have one more piece, and let's put that, should I put that like that? What do you think? Yes, that looks good doesn't it? Okay. And, uh, Just fiddling around with this now until I get it how I like it. And I think I'm. I think I'm pretty much there. That will do it. Okay, so let's bring back my uh, my picture to go underneath, and I'm going to I'm going to stick this down. I think with some dimensionals, so that my pine cones have got a little bit of room to breathe. So, put some around the edge. You know, let's be generous with the with the dimensionals because they're not expensive. Let's line this up now where I need it to be. I don't want a wonky tree. Really, this is easier than I'm making it look. You see, I have got a wonky tree. I've got a bit sticking out there. So I'm just going to have to take my scissors to it now. And trim it off. That's all right. It's not, uh, you know, it's a bit of paper at the end of the day, isn't it? All it is, it's a bit of paper. There we go. That's better. This is my card base. It's a piece of soft sky which is four inches by eleven inches and creased halfway at five and three quarters, and that's not it at all. This is the card. Here's my card base. It's a piece of soft sky, and I've cut it to four inches by eleven and a half, folded it at five and three quarters, and I'm going to stamp a greeting on the inside. And I'm using this uh, stamp from Seasonal Bells, and I've got crumb cake ink. I'm inking up my stamp and I'm just going to stamp. I'll be really brave and I'm just going to stamp directly onto my card. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five for the ink to transfer. Lovely. And I've just now need to put the card front onto the card base. And I have some tear and tape already on here. Just need to get the backing off. And actually I'm going to put a bit of tear and tape on this edge as well. And I'm just going to take take the backing sort of halfway off the sides because that's going to be my wiggle room. Come on. It's my husband's phone. Bring this in very carefully, line it up as best as I can, and when I'm happy, which is about now, I'll press down so, glue gun string there. Don't want that. 
pocket and I don't know what that is popping out of there but I don't want that either let's get rid of that there we go don't know what that was but I don't like it okay so my card is pretty much finished oh I did one more thing to it before I put my hot glue gun away um I had one pine cone left over so I uh, stuck it onto the front of the card at the ribbon that's my finished card and I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and if so then please don't forget to like comment and share and also if you really liked it then please do subscribe to my channel I shall be posting more very soon if you want to visit my Facebook page and my blog um, then please do feel free details are underneath this video in the more information box but that is it for now thank you very very much for joining me and I hope I'll see you again soon bye bye